Hey everybody, I've got some tips for you to help improve your shadow quality. So this is a before and this is an after. Notice all the detail we're getting here. So this is what it's supposed to look like. This is a project I received from Josh who's working on this renovation and he felt like he wasn't getting the detail he wanted in his cabinets. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to create that look. It's super easy, so let's get started. So I'm in D5 right now, and as you can see directly in the viewport, I really can't see that detail that I'm looking for, right? It's really, really kind of like bright, and there's not enough contrast around the edges. We really need shadows and a little bit of light to help all this pop. You know, this is a shaker style cabinet, and right now it kind of looks like a slab. So there's a couple things we did. First, we added a simple point light, and that helped add a little bit of a highlight right here. So now you can see the face that's parallel to the light is now glowing, right? It's now picking up on that light. And then most importantly, it's adding a nice shadow right down here. We're also getting some shadows on the knobs, but we also need shadows around here. So the easy way to do that is use a feature built into D5 called ambient occlusion. This is going to add all these beautiful little contact shadows. So all you have to do is click your scene and then go over to effect and scroll all the way down to a setting called AO. Again, that stands for ambient occlusion. When you toggle it on, you're going to get this weird like clay looking model and you're not, you know, you might be a little confused. Well, why do I want this? Well, this is actually a preview as to what's happening. So if I scroll in, I can see this is a visualization of the contact shadows being overlaid on top of the rendering. This is a nice, cheap, easy way to add a bunch of detail without having to spend extra time modeling uh, larger gaps, deeper grooves and all that. So how this works is there's a radius. So let me bring this all the way down and look, look right here in the corners, right? Anything gray is shadow. As they increase the radius, the shadows are expanding, right? So super tight is like five, super loose and wide, is like 125. I can even go higher and you can see it's just adding way too much shadow information. We don't want that. We're really concerned about like just kind of filling in all these little details. We want to make sure any surface has got a nice little shadow edge. So right now I've got it at 20. Let's try 50. Okay. And you can see, I see the shadow. I see it around the knobs. I see it around the hardware. It makes everything look a lot more defined, right? So if I toggle it off, nothing's gonna happen. What you need to do is click AO overlay in preview. This is now going to add that clay model on top of your render, okay? So if you don't believe me, zero is what it looked like before. 10 is with it like full opacity. Think of it as like a Photoshop layer. This is like 100%, you know, five, six that's like 50 60 percent so it's a nice little blend so now you can see we've got all these shadows appearing which we didn't have before so i'm all the way out here i can actually make out that this is a rectangle that this is a recessed panel and i can literally just dial in how much of a radius i want but here's the tricky thing and this is you know what we were struggling with if I increase it, it's applying it globally. So notice how dark it's getting up here. But then if I lower it, notice how it's just affecting this area. And, you know, it's just darkening these corners a lot. So we really don't want that because it's kind of messing up our view. So what I did is I actually brought this into Photoshop. So let me show you how I got this out first. So now that I've got my settings dialed in, let me just drop this to 50. I double checked all my path trace settings. I am using the path tracer. If you haven't enabled it, it's right under preference, rendering, toggle this guy on. And these are the settings I used. So 33 and 64. And that is just to get, you know, quick results out. Usually it takes me like a minute or two for images to come out. Once those settings are set up, go over to photo mode and make sure you toggle on your ambient occlusion layer. So I'm going to turn off these. And if you have no idea what these are, it's basically like another visualization layer coming out of your rendering. So this gives you your typical you know, rendering. This is something you can add on top and you have a whole channel just for ambient occlusion. So not only can you control it from the effect tab here, you can also get a layer that you can use in Photoshop. 
So now I'm going to go into Photoshop and open up those images I just rendered out. So I call them AO overlay and AO render. So I'm holding control to select two. This is the render with the ambient occlusion. And then this is the overlay or the ambient occlusion channel, right? And what I like about this is it actually shows me exactly where the shadows are. So look at the plant here, look at under the table, the chair, these nooks, look at all the shadow information that's being added. If I were to go to that comparison image, look at the before and after. Look at how much more realistic this looks, right? It's adding so much nice detail. So that's why it's like a really nice trick. Even in these nooks right here, I'm just gonna do it one more time. Look at that. It's like a no brainer, just turn it on, right? So if you want more control, grab your two images. I'm gonna grab the overlay, so control A, and control C to copy it. And then I'm just going to paste it with control V. So what I can do here is go over to my multiply blend level, right? And you can, depending on how much shadow there is, you could mess with either darken or light in or overlay. It's really going to depend. Um, these blend modes might do more harm than good, depending on how much shadow or white area you have. Um, once you do a couple of these, it'll make sense, but you can see how it like way, 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 way darkened my image, which isn't what we want. So what I'm going to do is actually lower this to like 15%. And let me just do a little toggle, right? And you can see it's adding all this nice shadow information, but my problem is I think it darkened this too much. So this is where masks in Photoshop are actually really, really nice, useful, and important. If you've never masked, it's a non-destructive workflow where you can remove or erase images or parts of the image without actually deleting it. Okay. So I feel like a lot of people just delete and erase their image. So that's why I'm pointing this out. So if I click the mask here, it's not going to look like anything happened. Basically white means it's going to let in anything from the image. Black is going to prevent anything from coming through. So what I want to do is actually paint black to remove ambient occlusion. So I'm going to hit caps lock. So my cursor looks like a circle and watch this. If I paint black, you see how I'm like lightening up my corners. Check that out. Pulling a Bob Ross here. I'm just painting, right? So I've lightened this area up. So let's do a little toggle and now it's just affecting the lower images. So I think here it's a little dark I can just paint here. Okay. And now, I think this little kick area is a little too dark. So I'm just going to erase this, right? And look at how much brighter that looks. But let's say I was like a little too extreme and I removed too much. All you have to do is switch to white and then paint again and it'll come back. That's what I mean by non-destructive. And if you've got your white up front and your black on the back, you can hit X to easily just toggle between them. So now I've lightened this up because I thought it was a little too dark. And now when I toggle them on and off, I get all the benefits of the shadows in these little crevices, right? Without having it darken my overall image. So yeah, it's an extra step, but for interiors, you're not going to be able to get a AO setting that covers everything perfectly. And you know, you don't have issues again. It's a nice little step. All we did was we brought in our, uh, our AO channel. We added a mask to it. And that's it. Simple, cheap way. I mean, like, look at this, like all these little settings go a long way. And like the best part of it is like, it is customizable here. So like you can dial it in there and then you can just swap it out. And now some people are going to say, well, what if I keep changing my design? I don't want to like keep dealing with this. So what I recommend when you're bringing your images in, use file place linked. And then this is like a hot link to your image. So if you overwrite the name of it, or you want to swap it out with a new image, let's say like a different kitchen option, right? All you have to do is right click the image and then you can relink it. So you've got that as a benefit. Anyways, that's it for this one. Hope it was helpful. It's a pretty nifty trick. Anyways, if you've got a question, drop it in the comments, like the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, think about subscribing. And if you, and if you want to learn more about D5 and all that, consider joining the Archivist Academy link is in the description. See you next time.